morning, someone we had the sun today, and you you know the UK, our sun is like for two days. So we make the most of it for those two days. We dig up our summer dresses and just take a lot lots of photos because I think next week we will have snow again. So yeah, we are loving the sun for now. And of course, me being me, I, I have to have washing outside on the line. I love putting washing outside. I think it's the village girl in me. I was supposed to talk yesterday and I was asked to talk about leadership. But I'm going to talk about leadership in, in the small quantities. I, I work with ladies mostly and the women I work with, I tell them all they are leaders and they don't, they don't understand and they will query. I'm not a leader, Debra, you are the leader. No, every one of us is a leader in one way or another. And I know the word influence has been used so many times, but every one of us is influencing in one way or another. Do you know there are people follow, who follow you without you even knowing? There are people who see the good stuff you do and they will follow you. And I don't mean online. I mean, in your community, there are people who look at you and admire the way you dress, the way you walk, the way you do, your good heart. And those people will turn around and go, does she go to church? Does she pray? What is it that, that, that she does? I want to be like that woman. And vice versa. So be careful what you do out, out there because whatever works you're doing, there's this uh, chapter in the Bible that says, um, when David said to one of uh, to his servants, is there someone else left from the house of um, Jonathan? So I can do to him the nice things that his father did for me. I don't know it be better. But um, it's, a verse, it's a verse about Mephibosheth. And the servant said, there is my Lord. His name is Mephibosheth and he's in jail somewhere. Mephibosheth was a cripple. So he was taken out of jail and treated nice because of, his, of what his father had done. We are leading by what we do in the society. We are leading by what we do, even at work, those in careers, you know that. If you do nice things, people admire you even without saying it. But most importantly, ladies, we are leaders to our children. So leadership doesn't mean that I've got a thousand people following me or a million people following me. Leadership means whatever it is you're doing to the people around you who are influenced by what you do. What are you leading them? Where are you leading them? Are you leading them astray? Because we can actually lead our kids astray. I was reading earlier from one of my old books. Because to those who don't know me, I'm also a writer. Where did I put it? I don't know where I put it now. Writer, find it. And it's all about leadership. And I thought, okay, if I'm going to talk about leadership, I will talk about this, yes. When you're a leader, you need clarity. You need to be clear on your, on your vision, clear on your statement. And this works it for mothers as well. Let's say you are a mother, ask mothers we know, you've got a line that the kids don't cross. Now your line is so wishy-washy. Yes, you can have pot uh, potatoes today, so you can have chips today for, for dinner. No, you can't have crisps tomorrow. Oh, maybe Friday. Oh, you can't have ice cream for breakfast. Oh, because it's Saturday, you can wish you washy. You don't have clarity in your leadership. So the children are confused. In the end, that kind of mother will confuse the children because they end up getting frustrated and angry and confusing the kids. It's like the kid whose parents say, do it, don't do it, do it, don't do it. So you need a vision when you're in, in leadership. You need to know exactly where you're going. The ladies I work with, 
I would let them argue in the group. I'll let them talk about what they are talking about, me quietly. And one of them will come up and say, you know, when DM comes, she will say A, B, C, D, exactly what I'm going to say, because they know my vision. They know where I'm going with it. Let's do business. We're not messing about. I'm not going to talk about your hair. I don't care how tall you are. What I want is financial freedom for you and, and the others in the group. So they will, um, they will argue, they will do this, but they know my vision. So I don't have to remind them about my vision. So when you are leading, you have to know what kind of mother are you? Are you the kind of mother who knows what the kids should do? Or are you the kind of mother who sometimes too too much of a friend? Vision. Clarity on your vision. Decisiveness. Leadership. Leadership means you to be decisive. What do we do? Oh, I don't know. What, what do you think? Oh, I don't know. You're not leading. You are now just a friend. Kids, we are going to do ABCD. If it's a discussion matter, let's discuss this. When you lead, are you leading with decisiveness? It's a very important point to know. Don't hesitate to commit. Show great consistency in your decision making. It's not this week we are doing this, next week, yeah, it's all right. You can cross the line anytime you want. I'll tell you a secret. When my kids were small, my kids don't knew I, I, I was harsh. And my kids always had the threat of being hit. But I never really got to hit them. They just knew it was there. And they, they just knew like an African mother, oh my God, she's going to kill us. And my kids were born and brought up in the UK, so they don't know much about my language at all. The only language they knew from the beginning was the language of when I'm shouting at them. Because then I switch. You can't shout at someone in a foreign language. That's just wrong. So they knew when I'm mad because I'll then switch to my language. So they knew that language fluently. You have to have that consistency. Not sometimes they cross the line. It's all right. Sometimes they cross the line. It's all right. And then one day, boom. They get confused, they don't even know whether you're leading or you're following what's going on. Are you our best friend or our mom? Where are you? Leadership. Most of us in our um, in this group we've joined will end up leading, leading other women, leading young ladies, leading in whatever it is we, we take on. Because most of our stories are here, here in this group you have to do something about that story. And that's something you have to do is um, helping others. And helping others means leading. If you're going to help others, you have to lead. Clarity, decisiveness. Where are you going to lead them? Are you going to lead them astray? Or how are you going to influence these people who are going to look up to you? These people who are in a situation where you were 10, 15 years ago. Because we say, oh, I've forgiven. I've forgiven. I'm so forgiven now. I'm healed. And then she hurt me. <laughs> She's going to say it. Mm -mm, not me. I don't work like that. And you're telling the people you're supposed to lead this. You have already told them, you have, you, have, you have forgiven, you have moved on, and Jesus did this in my life, and I'm thanking Jesus for this power of healing. I'm now forgiven. Bitch going down. I'm not having that. Mm -mm. Not me. She doesn't even know me. She doesn't even know me. Now we are confusing the people. Are you forgiving? Or are you, are you a fighting woman? Are you, are you going to carry a grudge against this woman? Because sometimes you have to come across these... Um, really hard decisions. Leading is hard. You come across women, people from all walks of life, and they will challenge you. Consistency. If you are a forgiving woman, most women in my group say, oh, check it out. Check this one out. Child, you see what she did? Check it out. I'm like, no, 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 no. We have to teach. We have to teach her. Maybe that's what she knows from where she coming, she's coming from. You don't know her background. Now, 
I'll teach that woman and I'll teach that woman. And if she, if she doesn't agree, well, she leaves the group. But that's her decision to do. If you just go down and go, boom, I don't like this one because she's done a BCD. Boom, I don't like this one because she, she is a BCD. You're no longer a leader. The same same with being a mom, same same with being a friend, same same with being an aunt, an influencer, whether you're influencing one person or a thousand people is the same. Courage. I don't like armchair leaders. I don't like leaders who sit back and go, okay, you do, uh, okay, you get on with it. I'll be watching from over here. If you're going to be a leader, you have to get your hands dirty. You are going to go in first. So if it's scary, you're going to go in first. That's leadership. You have to have the courage to say, okay, guys, we're going to do this. I know it's scary, but look, I'm going in. And be honest with them. I've got a weakness. I'm scared of heights. But I'm going to jump out of an aeroplane. You know, it's for charity. Let's do this, girls. I'm really scared. But yeah, yeah, let's do this. Not all oh, you guys do it. Oh, no, no. I don't. <laughs> You're not leading from the armchair. So even if it's your children in the house, also let them see your weaknesses. Be human. A leader is human. That means if they point out, mom, you made a mistake, you say, sorry, guys, mom, drop the ball. Don't be an African mom. I know everything and I'm always right. And you are my child and you say sorry to me. Well, but you did wrong, mom. You, you are disrespecting me. You know, they, they always go to um, emotional blackmail. You can't talk to me like that. I'm your mother. But I didn't shout at you. I'm just saying you. Red, you made a mistake right there. We have to change all that. We have to be human. We have to show our children, our, the people we lead, whether this is another thing. If I've, I've got a million, then I'm seeing myself up there. Everyone else is down there. They can't tell me what to do. I mean, <laughs> I'm a millionaire. I know everything, right? No, no, that's not how it works. You have to learn even from a woman, even from a person sleeping on the street. Their story is going to teach me something. People always wonder with me, how do you make friends with everybody? Because everybody has got a story for me to learn from. Whether they are rich, poor, black, white, what, whatever, I'll sit with them and listen to them. That, that's what leadership is like. You don't look at them and think, oh, well, they're living on the street. What can they teach me? Mm, I'm living in a mansion. It doesn't matter. They've got words of wisdom that you have to sit and listen to. Passion. Leadership is passion. That's all I have to say there. You have to be passionate about what you do. There was a woman in Africa who took in children, my aunt. She took in children. For years, she had children in her house. And people knew she took in children. So people who didn't like their babies, want their babies, or were in a situation not to raise, to be able to raise their children, would leave babies by the gate. In the morning, there would be a baby by the gate, wrapped up with a letter that said, take her in or take him in, I can't do this. And this woman used to take these kids in all kinds of kids, no names, no nothing, just take them in, look after them until they grow up, get married, go to university, whatever. And we used to tell her, oh, how can you take in everyone? And she would say, do you want me to leave that child by the gate? And she was so passionate with these kids. At, at, at some points, like during summertime or warm, warm winters, she would sleep outside with these kids, wash too many kids to fit in her house. They would just put blankets out and she would sleep with them outside and wake up in the morning and start a day. If it's raining, they would then cramp back into the house and they would all sleep under the table, on the couch, everywhere. There would be babies everywhere, children of all ages everywhere. Passionate. You have to be passionate about what you are doing. 
not just I'm passionate about my job. When I get home, uh, uh, well, you have to be passionate about being a woman, being a leader, being an influencer, being someone that people look up to. I know many people think, I don't have a group to lead. I'm not actually a leader. So yeah, that's not for me. Yes, it is. There are so many people who see you walk by, who look at you and think, hmm, I like your personality. I wonder what she does. Does she pray? Is she spiritual? There are so many people influenced by what we do without actually talking about it. I'll tell you another story. There's a woman I spoke to. I didn't know. She told me what her father had done. Her father was very physically abusive when she was growing up. So when we met Margaret, her name was, she told me about it. I, I haven't seen my, my dad in 15 years and I'll never forgive my dad. I said, Margaret, you'll never be happy until you go and sit down and talk to your dad. And we talked about it in passing. Our kids were in the same nursery. I never thought of her. I never thought about it. I just spoke with her and went my way. One day she called me and she said, Deborah, I know you're not religious or anything. I want you to come to my church on Sunday. I said, why? She said, please come to my church on Sunday. Please do for me just this once. And I said, yeah, OK. I went to a church on Sunday. I didn't know. I turned up to church, she's preaching, and she was preaching about me in the message I've, I'd given you that day. Well, I said the message in passing, but I didn't know what influence, what impact it had had on her life. And she gets on the pulpit and she starts preaching and she said, there's a woman in this church who has changed my life. And I'm like, yeah, okay, mm -mm. well done woman, whoever you are, yay. She said, it's temper, I'm like, Okay, okay, who me now? Because although I'm very loud and I'm very funny and stuff, I'm not a public person at all. I, I hide in the back and just laugh in the back. You know, the naughty people were told to shut up in the back. That's me. So I stood, she said, stand up. And I stood up. She said, this woman changed my life without even knowing. So sometimes the remarks you say in passing are impacted somewhat. Be careful how you influence, as you, how you lead as you walk along. Be careful of the impact you are making to that little child, to that woman on the corner, to that prostitute you won't even say hello to. Be careful. Because every kind word impacts the receiver. We are leaders. I know most people think because I don't have a group, because I'm not such a leader, because blah, 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 blah. No, you are leading. In your community, you are right now leading. I spoke to, uh, there was a woman yesterday uh, from Tennessee. What's, what was her name? Ale, Alessia or something like that. And she told me she and her husband are feeding people in their community. They just go and feed people in their community. Imagine the impact of that. They are not recognized by the government. Nobody knows what they do. They're just doing that because they saw somebody starving and they just decided, well, if you go and give them extra slice of bread. And the impact is on the receiver. The last point is humility. People always ask me what I ask for. I've always asked God to remain humble. No matter what platform I climb on, no matter how many millions I make, no matter the mansion I live in, I want to stay humble. I ask the Lord to keep me humble because you're not a leader unless you're humble. You can't be a leader who's beating on his chest, you know, oh, I'm so huge, everybody bow down, bow down, which is what women do most of the time, especially in my culture. If a woman goes up there, nobody's allowed to go up there. I mean, she's up there. Everybody stay down. Look at me. I'm the queen and everybody stay down. I ask the Lord for humility and to be honest with everyone. If I don't like what you're doing, I will tell you. I know it will hurt your feelings, but I'll be honest with you. I won't talk behind your back. 
I want to stay humble, no matter what. I want to be good old me, laughing with everybody, just going along, singing my music, looking all crazy, because that's what makes me happy. As long as I'm not harming anyone intentionally, I'm doing me. And those who want to follow me will follow me because they know I will not lead them astray. With Jesus, I, I always ask for strength, like, okay, you've given me so many people, what do I do with them? And when even people, when, when people ask me even a business question, Deborah, I'm struggling in my business, what do I do now? I'll take two, three minutes to just say, right, what do I say to this person? What's the most important answer they want to hear, not what I want to say, what do they want to hear from me? And how do I put it so that they receive it? How do I put it so that it's good for them? Because sometimes we squash people. Well, you're not good enough. You can't do that business. Who are you? Who died and made you judge? Well, this is so hard to do. This is the way to put it. This is so hard to do. I'm sure you can learn this. I'll, I'll walk you through how you can go through it. Be patient and learn it and do it right. That's the way to talk to, to, to talk to someone. Oh, you're not educated. Oh, there's no way you can ever do that. Oh my God, what are you doing? I've already squashed somebody. You've killed a spirit just by one sentence. So be careful what you say. That person who say good morning to you and you don't answer. You're squashing their day. You're killing their day. What leadership are you showing? Just a smile, women, just a smile. You are a leader, you are an influencer. It's not just those people on Instagram who have got a million followers who are influencing. You are influencing in your community. Right now, we are now on Hair Story platform. Would women follow you on this platform because of your changed attitude? Would women go out there, ask you, hey, Ruth, what's with you? I want some of that. Or do they think, oh my God, whatever she's eaten, mm -mm, she's got airs and graces now. There's no way we're going to touch her. Does this make us better people or worse? Do we think now we are up high on our high horses and we're just squashing? People ask me, how can you be friends with atheists? Some of my friends are atheists, they don't even want to know about God, nothing. But they are my friends. And they ask me, how can you be friends with them? And I tell them, look, these are my friends because they, I don't know their past.